Hi everyone, this is Anthony and I'm here today to talk about cybersecurity and touching base with reality in regards to a state of the field update for 2023 and heading into the 2024 year. So let's go ahead and get started. My goal is to be done within five to 10 minutes. Who, what, and when? So I have a BS in cybersecurity with a concentration in information security management. I have industry certifications, Security Plus, Net Plus, an offensive security certification, a networking certification, and I have three years in IT. I have a year as a web developer and two years as a network technician and a network systems lead. And most recently, I got my first cybersecurity job offer. So what is the state of the industry? Colleges tend to say that the industry needs X cybersecurity experts in 2023. But what does this really mean? Well, the reality of this statement is that the industry needs X seasoned cybersecurity experts in 2023. So people with some years of experience. This is tough. It's hard to get over that first job hump. So what you really need to get started is unfortunately a degree, certs, experience, references, and a drive. You simply just won't go anywhere without passion and knowledge, unfortunately. But it is possible to transfer over to um, cybersecurity from a different occupation. But your resume needs to reflect that you are a cybersecurity candidate. You can't be a cook trying to get into a job that requires three years of experience as an ethical hacker. This just simply won't work unless you get very, very, very lucky. And unfortunately, the competition is huge. You're competing against, at any given time, maybe three to 400 uh, potential cybersecurity candidates. So you need to stick out. What do you need to know? So this applies to cybersecurity, but also to other tangential related fields. You need to know Linux system administration, need to know Windows system administration, need to know enterprise networks and systems, you need to at least be familiar with their layout and how they work. You need to be familiar with WAN, LAN, routing, switching, things like of this, of this nature. You need to be familiar with web technologies like Nginx, Apache, how to set them up, how to serve your own web pages, how to secure it. You need to know application development so you can recommend security changes or security fixes. You need to be familiar with IT support or at least how to provide security uh, support or just general network support or computer support to customers, to end users. You need to be able to have that, uh, that friendly face that organizations are looking for. You also need to have experience with programming. So this can be Python, C++, C, uh, C Sharp, uh, Swift, iOS, Android, anything of this category you're going to want to look at. Um, but don't don't feel like you have to specialize into a bunch of different things. Probably just know uh, two to three different scripting languages that you can get up and off the ground with. Personally, I know Python. I love it. I know Bash, which is a Linux or a Unix shell. And I also am trying to learn C++. So just for some context where I'm at, I'm starting with C++. I already know Python and I already know Bash. So keep this in mind. Translation of skills. So I jumped from web to IT network and then and now into cyber. And I'm just waiting for my start date. It's difficult to go from cyber to IT networking. And it, it can be done you just need to be extra prepared and you need to be prepared to prove a lot more than if it were the other way around. So more preferably, you should aim for IT support, maybe then IT networking, and then jump to cyber. This is definitely more doable. For example, a networking person knows how to, knows how routing works and how to program a switch, but a cybersecurity person may not know how to do this. So it's more preferable to jump into something that requires networking or requires it rather than trying to go from cyber to networking and then trying to prove that you have networking skills because not every cyber person has networking skills, but every networking person is expected to know security principles. You also need to know the chain of skills, like just like I said. 
And the easiest way that I know how to investigate this simply is check out the CompTIA A+, Net+, and Security+, certifications. Each certification, chronologically, as I've mentioned, compounds on the last. And as long as you have the knowledge that each of those certifications cover, then you're, you're good to go. But it helps to have the certifications. Cyber is just really a culmination of skills derived from existing fields and technologies. So, for example, cyber is a mindset. It is a foundation on IT, networking, system administration, and application development, most notably. So, what do you need in 2023? Well, unfortunately, we still sort of need degrees, and that's probably not going to go away for at least another 10 to 15 years, by my estimations. But online programs are as not, um, what, what sort I'm looking for? Online programs are might be the way to go, especially if you're a stay at home or you have kids or you have a job that you're trying to get out of and into cybersecurity or IT. So definitely online programs are definitely an option and, and they're still highly respected, especially if you go with a well-known program or a physical campus that has an online program. So explore that and it can be cheaper. You can save a lot of money this way. You're also going to want to look at certs like CompTIA, Offensive Security, CCNA, which is Cisco, Palo Alto, Microsoft, Azure, AWS, and the list goes on and on and on and on. But keep in mind the difference between vendor and vendor neutral. For example, Apple, Microsoft, and Cisco are vendors. Vendor neutral focuses on the core competency. A vendor certification focuses on the knowledge of their product or service. So it's usually better to start off with a neutral, a vendor neutral certification like Cisco, or excuse me, not Cisco, CompTIA, and start out with A+, Net+, Sec+, and then jump into something more specialized like CCNA and CCNP. So if that's the network route, is you want to look at A+, Net+, or CCNA, and then eventually CCNP or CCIE, which is professional, which is associate, professional, and expert, respectively. For security, you're going to want to look at the knowledge, at least, or the cert, Net+, Plus or CCNA, SEC+, Plus or CYSA, maybe OSCP, if you want to go the ethical hacking route, but only if you're super crazy and super confident and super sure about this field. And then eventually, after five years of professional enterprise job experience, go after CISSP because the five, there's a five-year requirement on that. But CISSP is highly desirable. You're also going to want to look at web, uh, Python, pro, and it's not really so much certifications here. You're more looking at courses, projects, and profile, or portfolios, excuse me, not profiles. Well, profiles can play into that, I suppose, you know, but it's really the experience that you have with programming. It's not about the certifications or the courses or the degree that you have, though a bachelor's of science degree is pretty much a, uh, a rubber stamp to get in the door anywhere these days. You're also going to want to look at the knowledge at least contained in A+, and maybe take the certification. It's a two-part exam, so keep that in mind. For IT, you're going to want to start out with Google support, certifications and courses, CCNA, A+, Net+, AWS, which is Amazon Web Services, the cloud, Azure, Microsoft, uh, things related to the IT environment, which could be programming. It depends. You could be an IT web developer. You could be an IT security analyst or an IT network analyst, or you could be a network security analyst or a uh, web security developer. You know, There's a lot of overlap here. You just have to know what you're getting into and be able to specialize accordingly. You know, Play this smart. Play your money smart. These certifications are expensive. Uh, don't just jump into a... a uh, a, a concentration that you don't know if you're super confident about and start chucking money at it. That's very wasteful and of not a very efficient use of your time. So last and not least, we have the community aspect. You need to do this from day one. Everybody says program from day one, network from day one. Uh, have, you know, just start watching YouTube videos from day one. But this is the most important of all of this being an entry-level person. 
You can use fellow students as references to employers. Your professors and your mentors can vouch for you and say, hey, this person has what it takes, or they're getting there, or they show great uh, potential. You're going to want to engage with the online community, mainly on YouTube, Twitch, and LinkedIn. It really is a fact that if you reach out to someone, they can write a reference for you to their company, and you can bypass the application process and go straight to the hiring team's desk. This is invaluable. Also, contribute to a GitHub personal project, build a website, um, suggest changes to an environment, make, uh, make a tool, do something. Do something with code. And mentor to others. If you know something that somebody else doesn't, communicate that in a very respectful and humble way. Don't be a jerk. Uh, but you really have a duty once you know something. You have a duty to share it with others, like I'm sharing this information with you. You're going to want a home lab. You're going to want to look into that and simply just have an extra computer, install Linux on it, and start running services, systems, and IT stuff inside your own home. This will teach you uh, networking, web, security, and this is really employer gold. It shows that you can learn. It shows that you know how to do things on your own without any guidance. It shows that you know how to figure out a problem. It shows many different things. So hopefully this is kind of just a wake-up call to everyone trying to get into the field. I really want to condense this information without any fluff and Although this kind of a path takes four to five years of planning, it's highly worth it, and it prepares you well. Of course, there's other aspects, but this is the bare bones, basic, 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 basic stuff if you want to get into this field. So I, I appreciate your time, and I hope this helps you on your journey just starting out. Uh, if you're considering a program, please watch this video first and think about it. If you already have years of experience or you already have a bachelor's degree in something else, Focus on the certs, focus on the volunteering, focus on the experience. Don't concern yourself with getting another degree. If you have a bachelor's degree, it's a bachelor's degree. It doesn't really matter at the end of the day to the employer, just as long as you have a four-year degree from a accredited institution. So thank you so much. I appreciate your time, and I hope this helps.